Fitiro deu omnipotente e a de Maria Semper Virgine Beato Michele Arcangelo Beato Ioane Baptiste Sanctis Apostolis Pedro et Paulo Omnibus Sanctis et Tepe Pater Quia Pecavi Nimis Coditazione Verbo et Opere Mea Culpa Mea Culpa Mea Maxima Culpa Idio Precula Mea Tama Maria Mansen What's going on, guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. It is Thursday, October 19th, 2023, and I have an emergency alert to share with you guys. Right now, it is 2:34 p.m. Eastern Time here in the United States. And I wanted to give you an update on the situation in the Middle East. And right now, we have two nuclear bombers airborne over the United States and a nuclear war command and control plane. This is extremely unusual to have all of these planes up in the air at the same time, especially two B-52s. These are nuclear bombers that the United States uses as part of their nuclear deterrent. They have over 50 of them that are actually deployed for uh, nuclear weapons delivery. So there's two of them in the air right now. One is over central Kansas, and it's doing loops over central Kansas, and the other one is doing loops over southern California, just north of Edwards Air Force Base. So you can see all these loops here. And then here's the one over Kansas, okay? And these nuclear bombers have been airborne for the last few hours. And here we have the nuclear war command and control plane up in the air right now. It's over uh, Iowa. And these planes are responsible for remotely launching all of our Minuteman 3 ICBMs. In the event that ground-based command and control were to get wiped out in a nuclear war, these planes would be able to basically launch all of our silo-based missiles from the air. They could do that. And these planes are also responsible for communicating with our nuclear-armed submarines that are submerged in the oceans. So very important planes. So this thing is up in the air, and two B-52s are airborne right now. And last night, shortly after midnight, after Biden left Israel, we had multiple emergency action messages broadcasted, and they were very long. They had 172 characters. An emergency action message is a nuclear attack option, and it's broadcasted by the National Military Command Center, which is the Pentagon, and it goes out to our nuclear forces, basically various types of targeting information. And last night, there were several 172 character messages. Normally, they're like 30 characters. So that was uh, pretty unusual. So our nuclear forces are on very high alert. Biden is going to be addressing the nation about Israel and Ukraine tonight from the Oval Office at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and I will be broadcasting that live on my channel here on YouTube. And make sure you hit the bell icon so this way you can be notified when I go live or when I release these emergency updates. So 8 p.m. tonight, I will be covering this address. I will be broadcasting it, and afterwards I will do a full update on Israel the Israeli defense minister ordered his soldiers on the Gaza border to stay ready. Orders will be issued soon. Okay, so I find it very interesting that we have two B-52s airborne right now and a nuclear war command and control plane uh, just hours after the Israeli defense minister ordered his soldiers on the Gaza border to quote-unquote stay ready. Orders will be issued soon. 
We have the Iranian chief of staff saying that support for Israel by other countries may lead to the involvement of new players in the conflict, okay? And we have the U.S. 5th Fleet announcing the arrival of the USS Kearney to the Middle East. The USS Kearney is an Arleigh Burke-class destroyer, and not only is it an offensive uh, warship, it's also defensive. It can be loaded with the SM-3 uh, missile interceptors, okay? So it can also uh, integrate with an Aegis missile defense system. So the U.S. is beefing up its forces in the Middle East. And here we have some interesting pictures that surfaced. Apparently these are uh, buses that Hezbollah is going to be using to transport uh, fighters, volunteers from other Middle Eastern countries. They're going to transport them on these buses and send them towards Israel. Uh, we know that uh, Iran uh, asked for volunteers to fight against Israel, and apparently they've already gathered three million volunteers to fight against Israel. So uh, very interesting, guys. Um, it looks like this is going to be a multi-front war. I do have a friend of mine who lives in Israel. He's a police officer in uh, Jerusalem. And uh, he's telling me that the whole country is on edge right now and that they're uh, ready for an attack from all sides and that uh, regular civilians are arming up and uh, are basically forming security patrols. And uh, they're also uh, working underneath the military and the police. They're trying to volunteer to help out the war effort. So the entire nation of Israel is, is in a wartime mode, okay? Think of Ukraine when they uh, first got uh, invaded by Russia, okay? Uh, same situation in Israel right now. They're in a wartime mode, okay? The Israeli special forces conducted raids into Gaza recently to gather information about the hostages there. Uh, Israel has deployed its submarine fleet across the Middle East to prepare for various combat scenarios with Iran and Hezbollah. We have the Houthi movement in Yemen announcing a major jihadi mobilization and their intentions to assist in the Hamas war against Israel. Okay, so the Houthis are basically declaring jihad right now. Uh, we have some concerning information coming out from the U.S. State Department. They just issued a worldwide travel advisory. Okay, so here you can see October 19th, worldwide caution. Due to increased tensions in various locations around the world, the potential for terrorist attacks, demonstrations, or violent actions against U.S. citizens and interests the Department of State advises U.S. citizens overseas to exercise increased caution. U.S. citizens should stay alert in locations frequented by tourists. So this is huge news, guys. Okay, huge. All right, we know that basically jihad has been declared global jihad. And uh, once this war kicks off, when uh, Israel goes into Gaza... I expect all hell to break loose. I think we're going to have global jihad. I think we're going to see terror attacks across the world, especially in Western countries, in Europe, and here in the U.S. I think we're going to see Hezbollah get involved. I think Iran is going to get involved. And then eventually Russia is going to get involved. So um, get prepared, guys. Time is really running out to prepare. Um, it's going to really get serious very, very soon, okay, very soon. And uh, Iran and Hezbollah were even talking about, you know, taking preemptive action against Israel, okay. So all these countries that surround Israel, they're getting ready to basically attack Israel from all sides at once, okay. They also issued another travel advisory for U.S. citizens in the Middle East, Okay, so um, just absolutely insane, guys. I mean, tensions now are just the highest they've ever been uh, in, in world history, probably. I mean, this is, this is crazy, guys. We have nuclear powers threatening to use their weapons, you know, on a daily basis almost. 
Uh, we have this war about to erupt in the Middle East. And if this war does erupt in the Middle East, it's going to be the biggest land war in decades, okay, in decades. And uh, this attack on Israel by Hamas uh, was the most brutal attack on the Jewish people since World War II, okay? Over 1,300 Israelis were brutally murdered, okay, raped, murdered, you know, tortured, whatever. Um, some of the things I just can't say here, but uh, I've, I've read some stuff that, that'll really, uh, you know, really uh, make it hard for you to sleep at night when you hear about what some of these Hamas uh, militants did, okay? So this is a very, very serious situation. We have uh, the biggest land war in the Middle East in decades about to erupt. And we have the biggest land war in Europe since World War II going on right now with over half a million casualties. And this update is being sponsored by My Patriot Supply. Guys, I have a special deal for you that My Patriot Supply hooked me up with. And it's a 25% discount on their three month emergency food supply at the emergency food here. So you're going to come to get 25% off pay clipping embassies across the Middle East, including <laughs> embassies in Bahrain, Jordan, Morocco, and Egypt. Uh, the King of Jordan visited Egypt today. He met with the Egyptian president, and there was a joint Egyptian-Jordanian statement released from both governments, and it said that the continuation of the war in Gaza will put the region in a dangerous slide. The Egyptian president and the Jordanian king confirm after a summit between them in Cairo their rejection of the forced displacement of Palestinians, okay? So they're not going to allow Israel to go into Gaza and occupy it and kick uh, the Palestinians out of there. That's basically going to be like a declaration of war against uh, Egypt and Jordan, and then they would get involved. Uh, Reuters citing eight regional and western officials reports that the Israeli military campaign against Gaza will be unparalleled in ferocity and unlike anything Israel has done in Gaza in the past, the commander of the southern region of the Israeli army said we will take the battle to Gaza and this battle will be long and hard. Heavy Israeli raids have been occurring in the Beit Hanun district of northern Gaza. We have an Iraqi military source saying that U.S. Air Force planes carrying soldiers and equipment landed at the Al-Assad and Al-Tanf bases in the last few hours. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak visited Israel earlier today. Now he's in Saudi Arabia. Canada has called on its citizens to leave Lebanon immediately. And uh, the situation along the Lebanese-Israeli border is continuing to escalate. Uh, Hezbollah has fired more anti-tank guided missiles at uh, Israeli uh, military bases. And apparently they hit one important base there called the Manara uh, base. And uh, the uh, Israeli military is responding with artillery fire on Hezbollah positions. But uh, it looks like uh, Hezbollah is basically trying to uh, soften up Israel's defenses in the north in preparation for an invasion. They've already taken out two radar towers, and they've taken out dozens of uh, surveillance cameras. Now they're targeting uh, some bases, one of the most important bases in that part of Israel. So it looks like Hezbollah is basically uh, preparing for an invasion from from Lebanon, okay? Um, so it could, it could pop off simultaneously that Israel invades Gaza and then Hezbollah invades Israel, you know? So far the US, the UK, Canada, France, Australia, Sweden, Saudi Arabia, Taiwan, and Germany have told their citizens to leave Lebanon. And uh, we have some information coming from Syria that a U.S. military base in Al-Tanf was attacked by three drones 
in uh, the last few hours, okay, and these drones were apparently taken down, uh, but this is the second time that drones were sent towards a U.S. military base uh, in the region. One was uh, in Iraq a couple of days ago, now in Syria. So I want to just share some more flight paths with you guys. Look at all of these C-17s that have been going in and out of Israel in the last 12 to 24 hours. Here we have four C-17s that were up in the air uh, just a few hours ago. Uh, just a ton of uh, weapons and equipment going into Israel, guys. Probably hundreds of C-17s have gone to Israel in the last week or so. Here's two more uh, that were flying uh, to and from Israel last night. And here we have a picture of the USS Dwight Eisenhower, which is the second aircraft carrier that's supposed to be going to the eastern Mediterranean to reinforce uh, the first one, which is the USS Gerald Ford. And uh, you can see it's fully loaded with uh, aircraft. Look at all of these fighter jets, guys. This is crazy. Um, and... Uh, here we have a picture just showing all of the U.S. military assets that are going to be going to the eastern Mediterranean. We have the Dwight Eisenhower Strike Group, the Gerald Ford Strike Group, and then we have the uh, U.S. Uh, Marines going to the eastern Mediterranean as well. They were in the Persian Gulf, and uh, there's 2,500 Marines in this uh, Marine Expeditionary Unit, and... Uh, they have a WASP-class amphibious assault ship, a Harper's Ferry-class dock landing ship, a San Antonio-class amphibious transport dock. Uh, I mean, just a ton of uh, you know equipment going to the region here, preparing for an all-out war. Okay, the U.S. is preparing for an all-out war in the Middle East. Okay. Uh, last night, we had uh, Biden's doomsday plane uh, land in uh, the U.S., and there were two nuclear war command and control planes airborne when his doomsday plane was coming in. Uh, but what's interesting is that this doomsday plane landed at STRATCOM, and rather than landing in the D.C. area, uh, because that's where, you know, the president is supposed to be, right? He's supposed to be at the White House. But uh, instead, it landed in Offutt Air Base, which is where STRATCOM is. They have a bunker there. That's where they took Dick Cheney after 9-11. And I'm just wondering if they dropped off Biden at the STRATCOM bunker, and then they took off and, and went to D.C., you know, with an empty doomsday plane just to have it on standby to evacuate the defense minister or the vice president. Um, but it seems to me like Biden might have been moved to the STRATCOM bunker because in the next 24 to 48 hours, there could be uh, some kind of major escalation in the Middle East, okay? So here we have a picture of uh, the South Korean Air Force with the U.S. Air Force posing in front of a B-52 that landed in South Korea. Okay, so South Korea has two B-52s there now, and the USS Ronald Reagan Carrier Strike Group and an Aegis Missile Defense Warship. Okay, so they're getting ready for a possible attack from North Korea. Japan says that they're drawing up plans to evacuate residents of remote islands in the southern Okinawa <laughs> Prefecture to other prefectures in the event of an emergency in Taiwan, Chief Cabinet Secretary Hirokazu Matsuno said. The Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov thanked North Korea for supporting its war in Ukraine and pledged Moscow's complete support and solidarity for North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Okay, so... Um, absolutely crazy times we're living in, guys. Make sure you have your bug out bag packed and that you're uh, bringing it with you anytime you go places far away from home. Make sure you have a nuclear war survival plan, which should be which should be centered around a fallout shelter. And make sure you top off all your supplies because as soon as things kick off in the coming hours or days. There's going to be some serious panic buying, okay? There might be another ammo shortage. There might be 
uh, some uh, shortages in uh, freeze-dried food. Okay, so get everything you need now, and I'm going to keep you guys updated. I will be going live at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time to cover Biden's address to the nation. I will uh, play it on my stream, and then afterwards I'll do a full update on Israel. So I'm going to start the stream at like 7.30, 7.45, something like that. So hopefully I'll see you guys then. Uh, other than that, take care, God bless, and don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere.